Floor Plan Drawing Workflow. In this video we will show you how to use Undet for AutoCAD to make floor plan drawing from point cloud data. Floor plan drawing workflow can be divided into seven steps. First step is to create correct UCS. Second step is to draw external walls. Third step is to draw internal walls. Fourth step is to draw windows and doors. Fifth step is to draw floor objects. Sixth step is to draw ceiling objects. Last step is to annotate drawn objects. For floor plan drawing workflow video we will use specific template. Now let's open Undet project. Reason why we used this specific template is because it has all layers that you need to properly complete floor plan drawing. Those layers will help you to separate objects and organize drawing. If you want to have this template, contact us via email info at undet.com. First let's create view section of object that we are interested in. If you want to know more about how to manage view sections and color point cloud, please watch video Undet for AutoCAD, how to start. This video is attached in video description. After creating view section let's adjust its size. While working with floor plans this step is really important. Let's start first step and let's create correct UCS. Let's rotate view. You should find longest wall and rotate our view by drawing line and using command view by line from visibility management tools tab. After this let's create new UCS that is defined by current view. Let's save this UCS and assign name to it. To do it, you can use UCSMAN command from your command line. Now we should draw some perpendicular lines to make sure if our new UCS is correct, and if our drawn lines will be parallel with building walls. We should draw multiple lines and check couple different walls. As we can see all lines and walls are parallel so now we know that our UCS is good. Now we can move on to second step external walls drawing. Before we start that, we should know what kind of tolerance we will be using. Our practice shows that it is best to keep 30 mm tolerance while drawing perpendicular objects. So let's follow that. To draw external and internal walls we recommend to create about 20 cm thickness view section and lift it about 150 cm from floor level. This will allow you to see really good outline of walls, and you will be able to draw correct internal and external walls. Let's start drawing external walls. To do it we will select external walls layer. Simply follow building outline. It is better to draw lines that are on the same plane as one long line and then draw additional lines for walls that are not on same plane. This will help to hold on walls geometry. We recommend to use ortho mode as much as possible while drawing walls, since we created new UCS and we are drawing perpendicular walls with 30 mm tolerance. After completing external walls outline, we can move on to step 3 and draw internal walls. To start we recommend to check distance between internal and external walls and offset outline we just draw. This will save you some time, since those walls on theory should be parallel. After offsetting external wall, we should apply internal walls layer to our new wall. Also we have to go around and check if wall thickness was same everywhere. If you see any difference in wall thickness you should adjust it and fix it. After new internal wall is checked we can move on and draw all other internal walls. Once again we recommend to use ortho mode as much as possible while drawing walls, since we created new UCS and we are drawing perpendicular walls with 30 mm tolerance. At this point we will create new, smaller view section to get better view of inside walls. We also want to work with green indicator as much as possible. Now it is up to you and up to your workflow if you will work with corridor and longest walls first, or you will go room by room, and join everything together after. Anyway we should keep on drawing lines that are in same plane as one long line and then draw additional line. After completing all internal walls we can take a look at our floor plan. 
Let's move on and add doors and windows. For this step we will use our created dynamic blocks which will save us a lot of time, especially if we are working with big object. If you want to learn more about our dynamic blocks and try them please contact us via email, info at undet.com. We will start from doors. It is possible to indicate door location from same view section that we used for external wall drawing but we want to be more precise so we will create new view section. This time let's create room size view section which will be just above floor level and apply coloring to this view section. As you can see it is really easy to identify doors locations. Let's apply doors to whole room. As you can see, our dynamic blocks can be adjusted very easily, you can always change doors type, switch sides and adjust size. Our advice is to be very careful and check every wall, if you do not want to miss any doors. Also, every separate room should have at least one entrance, so keep that in mind while working with doors. After adding all doors we can move on and add windows. First we should adjust our view section so that we could see our window section. To draw windows again we will use dynamic blocks. We have few different windows selections here, since we are adding windows that are in between internal and external wall, we will choose this block. Usually you can add one window block throughout whole length but in our case these windows are separated by wall, so we will show them as three separate windows. With our windows blocks you can easily change windows size, length, profile size and so on. After adding and adjusting window, we should apply them to whole plan. Now we can see how our plan looks with doors and windows. Moving forward, we will start working with our floor objects. It will contain internal walls that are not structural, bathroom objects, furniture, stairs and so on. We will start working from this room, that seems to be bathroom. After adding walls, we will add doors as well. To add objects such as urinal, sink and water closet once again, we will use our dynamic blocks. And again, you can see how easy it is to adjust block dimensions and how much time those blocks save. Let's add radiators and locate them in our plan as well. Now we should add stairs to our plan, since this building have three stores, there will be main staircase, but do not forget to look for any other stairs and draw them as well. We should always specify direction to which our stairs are going up or down. To do it, we use triangle and annotate stairs direction. Let's take a look to our plan with all floor objects added. After completing stairs we are done with our fifth step and we can move on to sixth step and work with our ceiling. In this step we will show all structural objects that can be located on our ceiling such as beams, soffits and all ceiling changing. Right now you can see how we added them to our selected room. We noticed that there is change in ceiling in this room as well. So we will show it. It is really easy to indicate every object in our drawing since we are using template with all layers that we need, and every line has its own settings so with time you can read drawing really fast. After drawing ceiling objects in all other rooms, we can take a look to our plan before starting our last step which is annotating. So first we will start from adding annotation block to each room. This block will allow you to add room name, and add floor level and ceiling height annotations. Now we will have to create view section throughout whole volume of room, since we want to see our floors and ceiling. After placing room annotation select it, and adjust it height so that it will be on the same level as our floor level. After that simply drag the arrow up or down to ceiling height and now you have your room annotation. It is normal that annotation value is the same. It will only change after you will save your drawing. Next we can move on to internal soffit and beams annotation. 
It all depends on what type of annotation we are choosing. If we are showing object height, we will have to lift our annotation to floor level and then adjust grip to our selected object height. But if we are showing object level annotation, we can lift our annotation to selected object level straight away. Once again, those annotations values will be affected only after we will save drawing. Now we will add ceiling annotations. Since we have sloping ceiling and we have our normal ceiling height, we can add annotation and show sloped ceiling height, and we will add triangle to show sloping ceiling direction. Now let's add annotations to doors and windows. We can finish our drawing by adding rest of annotations. Here we have final floor plan drawing. Thank you for watching and see you in our next videos. For more info subscribe our channel or visit our website at www.undet.com.